my name is Jemima Hughes, I'm a performance poet from Birmingham and today I'm going to be answering some questions for Poetics. So my first time performing was I think 2017, it was at a night called Hit the Ode in Birmingham at the Hippodrome Theatre at the time and I'd been to the open mic the month previous and not had the guts to put myself down and then the following month decided to go up and I don't remember it very well, it's a very big blur the only reason I do remember any of it is because it was on film, so I've seen it since, although I, I try not to watch it now. I practically ran onto the stage, spoke as fast as I could for five minutes and ran back to my seat, vowed never to do it again because the nerves beforehand were a killer. They, The anxiety and the nerves were unbelievable and the whole run up to it, I was like, just do it this once, just do it this once, just do it this once and I will never do it again. But the adrenaline rush from performing mixed with the incredible response from people afterwards that came up to me and said that they related to my experiences because what I did that day was very mental health based um, and that the poems kind of rang true with them and they related and they liked what I was talking about. Um, all contributed to the fact that that was definitely not the last time that I, was, I performed and that I just went on to do it again and again and again. But believe me, the nerves every time I perform is enough to make me think I'm never doing this again. It's the aftermath when everyone kind of relates to you and you feel you can feel how important what you've just done is that keeps you going. My advice to a first time performer would be something that was said to me, and I don't know who said it to me, but it was said to me very early on by somebody who obviously knew what they were talking about because it made sense, to show every single emotion on stage except fear of being on the stage. You can show fear if it's a part of what you're doing, if it's part of the poem or the performance, but the audience can feel if you're just terrified of being on there. And that, I realised that what they meant was not that you can't be nervous, not that you can't be scared, but just channel that into your performance. And rather than showing it as fear or or even speaking it as self-deprecation or being like saying negative things about what might just be about to happen, channel those nerves and that adrenaline and everything you're feeling into your performance and make it a part of what you're speaking about and what you're saying and what you're doing rather than making it about the fact that you're terrified of being on stage. So show every emotion on stage except fear of being on there. And also for people who are very nervous because nerves always get the better of me. Do whatever you need to do before you go on stage to shake them off. Like my first ever headline performance, I remember I just sat because I didn't think I should get up and move and I didn't want to kind of get in the way of everybody else's night. So I sat and I like tried to focus on something on the wall and I was trying to breathe. It was horrific. I was really winding myself up. And as soon as I got up, I shouted the first poem and kind of shook off all the nerves and it helped. But what I've learned over time is you don't have to sit and stew in those nerves. If you need to be stood like at the back, kind of doing a little jig or a dance and like doing your own little thing and being in your own little world, you're allowed to do that. So if you need to like dance your nerves out before you go on stage, absolutely do it. It definitely helps to not be kind of just sat and cooped up and making yourself more nervous and making yourself just sit through it. Just shake it off, shake it all off. So when did I feel like I could refer to myself as an artist? I owned the poet label fairly early on, I think, um, after I'd done a few performances. I got my first headliner in 2018. So definitely by that point then I started to own it um, because people were booking me as a poet. So I think I felt then more like it's acceptable. But what I would say to people who do anything creative, if you create stuff, you are a creative. If you are doing art of any kind, you are an artist. If you write, you're a writer. If you write poetry, you're a poet. If you perform poetry, you're a performance poet or a spoken word artist. It's okay to own what you do and you're allowed to be, and I would suggest that you are, your own biggest cheerleader. You're allowed to own it and have confidence in it. And it's really important that you do. Um, and one thing I realised was as soon as I started to own it and told people I was a poet, which I, I now call myself a performance poet because I think that's far more accurate. What I do is far less page and more performance based. Um, people believed me 
as soon as I started to have confidence in it and believed it and used that as that was what I'm doing, people believe you. And it's a beautiful thing, really. Own it, have confidence in it, and other people will too. I think I have a, a line that um, I've got to remember it now. It's easier to get others to believe in something that you already believe in. So if you believe in yourself, you'll find other people find it easier to believe in you as well. Who is my alter ego? Uh, I, d I think it's really difficult to say that I even have one. I, d I don't think I really have an alter ego with regards to like my performing, if that's what we're getting at. Um, because the performance poetry I do, because it's autobiographical and it's very much my own story and it's very honest, very raw and very open, I think it would be difficult to have an alter ego with that because it is just my life and it is my truth. Um, so it's it's not really possible to kind of have a character or an alter ego with that because it is it is so accurate and so honest. Um, however, maybe what I would say is when I'm on stage, there's a confidence that comes with being on stage or on camera, on film, when I'm talking about my poetry or reciting some poetry, there's a confidence behind it that I don't believe I have yet in my personal life when I'm dealing on a personal level with my trauma and with my mental health. I think like a lot of people, we're very good at giving advice to other people and it's harder to take it ourselves. So I think there's a confidence with performing on stage and with telling my story that I don't quite have in a personal capacity yet. I'm still going through some stuff. I'm still having therapy. And so maybe my alter ego on stage has a confidence that I'm trying to pull into my personal life and haven't quite got to yet. Um, yeah. I think lockdown has been a mixture of good and bad with regards to creating and writing. Um, it's definitely been less inspiration, especially the longer lockdowns have gone on for or going in and out of them. We're not, we've not been going out and seeing each other perform and listening to each other and getting inspiration from the outside world like we usually would. So yeah, the, the writing at times has been far slower. And I think you just kind of got to go with that when that happens and not put pressure on yourself to constantly be creating because you feel like you're a creative person. You should be creating. If the inspiration isn't there, it's not that easy. And I don't think it has been there a lot of the time for me during lockdown. That being said, I have written some new pieces, probably pieces that I wouldn't have come up with without lockdown because they're very situational. For example, a lockdown Tinder poem. I wouldn't have been in a lockdown on Tinder if there wasn't a lockdown. So um, it has, it's kind of pushed me into a place maybe I wouldn't have gone into otherwise. And it's also given me time to really appreciate what I'd already done. I was just kind of go, 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 go before lockdown, different performances. Um, and then my book came out right at the kind of like first lockdown. So it's given me just time to stop and go, what I've done already deserves to be appreciated, which has been really nice. And now I'm looking forward to kind of getting back out and performing poems that I'd, I've performed a lot already, but I've had time to sit back and go, I'm really proud of that. And I'm excited now to get back out and perform those again, along with maybe a couple of new things. What is my message to the world? I love this question. And I think my answer will always be the same. Keep listening to each other. It is such a powerful thing to feel heard when you are speaking. It literally saves lives. I know over the years, it has saved my life, feeling heard on a kind of one-on-one -on -one level with family or friends and also audiences allowing me to share my story and to and listening to what I've got to say and then showing that they really heard it by speaking to me about it afterwards. So keep listening to each other, keep allowing each other to be heard and thank you for listening to me.